Now, a tennis ball was baseball with a tennis ball. And what we would do is we lived in a, you know, a street where we had a neighbor right across from us. We'd gather all the homies together, and uh, we'd use the garage as a backstop, right? And, you know, we'd, we'd use, like, the mailbox for first base, and, you know, you know how we did that thing. And, and we just we just drill balls and just nail the neighbor like across the street. If you hit it off the roof, it was you know the ground will double. If you hit it over the house, it was a home run. You know those type of things. Those those, parents, those those neighbors, by the way, God bless them. I mean, we're drilling their windows and they were cool, man. They were full of grace, right? And uh, but I remember in those summers, especially like in August, you know, it'd be like 90s and and you know we'd be running around the whole time. We'd be dying of thirst. And we'd go over to the hose, you know, on the, on the side of the house, and just start, just start drilling the water down. And and we were, we were so dehydrated, we were so thirsty, but that was so refreshing. Spiritually speaking, that's the state of our world today: dying of thirst, trying anything they can to fulfill that thirst in their life for God. Chuck Smith, the pastor of, of Calvary Chapel says this, everyone is thirsting for God. We all have a huge spiritual thirst that can only be filled by God. We know we are thirsty, but we try to satisfy that thirst with physical things or with emotional experiences. But all of these things offer only a temporary relief. As the excitement of the new toys or the emotional experiences give way to that nagging thirst that we all have deep down inside. So we pursue an endless quest of unsatisfying acquisitions, supposing that we will experience satisfaction eventually. Or we give up on the ultimate satisfaction and settle for temporary relief that comes in spurts. You know, it's like, in, it's like Thanksgiving, you know, when you hang out with your family and, and you got turkey and you got, st you got all of it up in there and you just go to town, right? And you just, you, give, me, give me seconds, give me thirds, you're just... And you're so stuffed, you're like, man, I never want to eat again. I, I'm good. And then what happens? You're watching like a game or something on TV. Next thing you pass out. You wake up. What do you do? Yo. Man, I'm kind of feeling a little hungry. What are you cooking that? Turkey sandwich, right? You gotta know what you do. A little pumpkin pie. Little Get temporary. That's exactly what's going down today, where we are spiritually thirsty, and we're trying to fill it with everything but God. Jesus says, if you thirst, come to me, and I will give you living water. It says in verse 38 that out of his heart, out of your heart and my heart, will flow... You can underline that. It will flow rivers of living water. That heart, that word for heart, means your innermost being. Deep down inside, who you really are. Out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, when we went to the, to the side there, when we were dying of thirst, we, we, turn it, we, we turn on the hose, and we take a drink. And I think, as I was studying, I think God gave me three different people that are kind of in this room right now that can relate to this. Number one, people that go over to the hose, but it's, it's, the hose isn't connected, it's completely off. You're not connected to Christ. So you just walk through this life, you're just continually thirsty. Then there's a second person in here, there's a second kind of people group right here, that you've connected, and you have God's spirit in your heart, but here's the problem, the hose, there's a kink in it. I used to do that. I used to hate that too. I'd be drinking and my brother would always just go in, you know. Yeah, I'd be pouring all over myself. It'd stop. You see, sometimes right now, I think in this, in, in our body right now, there's a kink. And God's spirit isn't flowing anymore. What happened? Then there's a third group. The dude, the, the hose is connected. You know, it, it started out hot. You know how the hose it starts coming out all hot and nasty, but then now it's cold, it's flowing. Dude, you're drinking it, you're throwing it, and it's just shaking off you on the lives of other people. Where are you? What is flowing out of your heart, and how is it flowing? Let me tell you right now, those of you that 
don't have the hope connected, without repenting and receiving Jesus Christ by faith, you will not have the access to change your heart. Bottom line. You're plugging into the wrong power source. Without that connection, you will not be able to have it. Because he said, those who believe in him, I will send the Holy Spirit into your heart. Number two, the Spirit's kind of trickling out because the hose is kink in your life. I can tell you this, to you and you, without a continual connection and cleansing, you will not have access and will shut out God's Spirit working in your heart. Let me share a couple things I think that I see kink our hose, our connection to Christ. Number one is sin. Straight up. In your life and my life, when we choose to go outside of God's will and we disobey God, you're going to be king. Psalm 66, 18. Please write this down and please study this. The Bible says this. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. If I regard, that word regard means if I continue in it, if I hold on to it, I'm, I'm harboring this continual known sin. Do you have secret sin? You have something that that is just, you're so ashamed of, you don't think God could, for, could forgive you, and you're holding it back. I'm telling you, for your own good, do what James says in, in James 5, 16. Write it down if you want. He says this, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. There's a healing that has to go on in your life and my life. A healing, a confession, confessing to God. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins to God, He's faithful and just to cleanse us, to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We go to God. Oftentimes, I'll go to a friend that I trust. And I'll confess it to him, man. Man, I, I, I got this sin in my life. I've got this junk in my life. I gotta give it to God, but I gotta pray, pray for me, and take, pray that God takes it away. Nothing cooler as a pastor to see someone caught in a sin or or harboring a sin that comes and prays to God, and then comes to me, and, and I, as a brother, can pray for them, and I see this big, huge burden just. Just explode off of them. It's like the kink just goes, and it just starts flowing again. There's nothing cooler than that. Sin. It will kink your hose. Number two, hurt. Listen, you and I in this life, we live amongst a, a, amongst a whole group of human beings that make bad choices. And we've been hurt. Some of us more than others. Some of you in here right now, you're holding on to hurt from way a long, long time ago. As a kid, you were abused. You were neglected. Something happened. You're holding on to it. You're harboring this. It's hurt. It's pain. It's mounting in bitterness. It's kinking your hose. Until you come to God and ask for him to take it out, remove it, and heal it, it's kinked. It's kinked. Turn to Ezekiel 47, if you will, with me. Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel is what we call a major prophet. Uh, doesn't mean that he's cooler than, you know, Malachi or something, but, you know, it's just a little bit bigger book. And God has chosen Ezekiel to be a prophet for God to basically share uh, God's heart with the people. Now, it, as we get to chapter 47 in Ezekiel, he's basically given us a picture of the millennial kingdom and what it's going to look like when Jesus comes back and sets up shop here on earth. And verse 47, he's going to give you a picture of a river that's going to be flowing with water that is filled with heal healing waters. This is the picture I want you to understand that God wants to give you as you confess the sin, as you, as you ask God to remove the bitterness. He'll start flowing these healing waters through your heart and into the lives of others as well. Now pick this story up here. Chapter 47, verse 8. 